What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Leo coming to you guys with yet another video. Coming to you guys today with something different than I usually do on my channel. So I'm starting this new thing up on my channel where I pretty much will be answering your guys' questions. And we're going to start with doing wrestling hot takes. I'm going to do more videos like this where people can leave me wrestling hot takes. We talk about it. And, you know, just a way for me to engage with you guys and have some of your questions that you guys may have as a wrestling fan be answered on the channel. So I want to do something different than what I usually do on the channel. So more things are definitely be coming for in the future. So I just wanted to put that out there. But um, I have put up on my community tab um, that I'm going to be doing a wrestling hot takes video. And, 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 and uh, some of these individuals pretty much... Um, left some uh, great questions that I'm going to be trying to get to each and every one of them if I'm able to. But if I'm not able to get to the majority of them, then I'll do the majority of them that I can here. And then I'll maybe make a part two and where I do the other questions. And if you guys still want to leave your questions, you have an opportunity to do so for part two. So um, we're going to get into it with the first question from Jadis Young, 9306. I have a question, not really a hot take. Do you think damage control will split up or no and if you do when do you think it will happen now i do think they're going to split i do think because if you look at what happened at crown jewel and we brought back they brought back Kyrie sane and Kyrie sane's now into the fold with eo now it looks like bailey's pretty much that odd one out at this point because you as of right now as if, if they're really adding in Kyrie sane to damage control it's really going to be eo Kyrie, Bailey, and Dakota. And the thing is, I don't think it's going to end well for Bailey. And I think the thing with Dakota, she's just pretty much there. So it's going to be a very interesting story where they're taking Dakota's story if they're going to involve her in this feud in any type of uh, way. But the way I see, I do think they're going to end up splitting. And I think it could happen either this Friday on SmackDown because I think they're probably going to do a segment where Bailey's pretty much trying to figure out like what's going on with EO like you didn't tell me that you were that Kyrie was coming back you didn't let me know this was going on and I feel like either they're going to tease something there or they're actually going to pull the trigger and actually have EO break away because the thing that they've been doing the story they've been telling with EO for since pretty much since the the whole faction started is her potentially getting more over especially as far as going back to um backlash early this year when she had her match with Bianca during that time, they kind of built it up as such, and a lot of people wanted to see her break away from damage control, and that's the story been going into the summer and Money in the Bank, and now we're finally at after Crown Jewel and her being champion. So what I do think is going to happen is she is going to break away from Bailey, but I think before the, well, I'm gonna go back and just say, well, I think what's gonna happen they're gonna they're gonna turn, but I see them building up this feud, building up the story between. Bailey and EO and them possibly turning heel well they're already kind of technically heel already but actually full going on heel with and Bailey turning back to being a face I don't think she's going to be back to being the hugger or whatever that whatever the gimmick that was that's not gonna happen she's still gonna have the same gimmick that she has now like the whole road model gimmick but she'll be more in the face category pretty much more like an anti-hero in a sense so what they're gonna do I think they're going to have her turn at Crown, not Crown Jewel, we just had the pay-per-view, sorry. We're, they're going to have them turn at Survivor Series. Since the next, the next pay-per-view we have is Survivor Series, then you write Bailey off for a little bit, and maybe you have her come back in the Rumble as a surprise entrant after being gone for maybe about a month. Now, the story going into Mania is Bailey, you know, having a new lease on life and having her go up against EO for the championship at Mania. I don't know if they're going to have it be for the championship, but I think that will be a well-deserved moment for Bayley if she can win the championship at Mania. Now, there's ways you can get to that. I think the better option is probably have her win Elimination Chamber. If you want to even make it even a bigger moment, you can have her win the Rumble. The only reason why I wouldn't say have her win the Rumble, because you have other talent that you can actually give that, that rub to, and you can still get to that by having her win the Elimination Chamber. But, I do have them uh, damage control splitting very soon. Another hot take from um, Jadis. Uh, you said, hot take, Imperium will eventually break up. I don't know how, but I really think they could split split them up. But I, but you have to set it up as a good storyline. Yeah, they would have to set it up as a good storyline because that, that is probably one of the better factions that they have 
like literally top three factions that they have in WWE right now. Because think about you have the Bloodline, you have Judgment Day, and I think outside of that you have literally Imperium. So you don't want to do have them break up already. And plus, you already have the Street Profits potentially forming with, with the whole alliance that they have with Bobby Lashley. So that's gonna be another faction that they're gonna throw into the mix. So you don't want to get rid of that faction. And plus, there's still more that they can do. You want to, I think, before you have them split, have them win the tag titles at some point, and then maybe once you take the titles off of them, then then you can build up that story of having a split happening in Imperium, because we all know. Gunther will be okay on his own technically because he really doesn't necessarily need a mouthpiece, but it will definitely help him in the long in the long run. So I would have him keep himself surrounded with Imperium, even though he doesn't really need them. Because if you look at his matches and he, when he defends the championship, he doesn't really need Imperium to, to retain. He wins on his own, even as a heel. So that's definitely going to be something that you can potentially tell in the future. Now, if it was a situation where you know. He relies on Imperium a lot, similar to how Roman does with the Bloodline. Then you can have a, 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 a like a um, situation for a turn, but not right now. Maybe in the, in the next six months to a year, maybe you can have that happen then. But I will don't think Imperium should break up just yet. Eventually they will though. Um, another hot take you have is Ronda Rousey will, will eventually come back to WWE. No. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Do not do that. No, no, no. She she's okay where she's at. She's okay where she's at. She can she can keep doing what she's doing. The next question you have from uh, we have from Jadis. A lot of these is coming from Jadis, you guys. So just putting that, that disclaimer out there. Uh, with either Bad Bunny versus Logan Paul at WrestleMania, I really think that Bad Bunny will win the championship and then he'll lose it to Ray. I mean, I can see that happening. I can see that happening, but it just wouldn't make sense because you took the title off, off of him just so you can give it to a celebrity, to give only to give it to another celebrity, and the celebrity loses it right back. So it's like a full circle thing. I don't think Ray needs a championship right now because with this, with everything he did with the U.S. Championship, he really did, didn't do anything. So he doesn't need the championship. But as far as Logan losing it, I think he's not going to lose it to Bad Bunny. I'm sorry. I, just, I, I love Bad Bunny. I love that match will be fire. And you could sign me up any day of the week. I just don't think Logan Paul is going to lose the championship to um, Bad Bunny. I think if I think if he's going to lose that championship at Mania, he's going to lose to LA Knight. I think that's the story that they're going to go in. If, with the teases that they've had in leading up to Money in the Bank, I think that is the feud that they're going to go with going into WrestleMania for that U.S. championship. The next question you have, um, hot take. Um, you said Biggie retires or he doesn't, or he go, he goes to the rare one, but I think he does, but will he win? Um, I think it's a possibility that he could return. I mean, in, in the world of wrestling, you can never say never. And we don't really necessarily know the full, like diagnosis of how far he's come since then. We know he's been making improvements, but the question is, will he be in ring ready? by Rumble, which is about a month, another month and a half away. So, it's a possibility. I think if he was to show up, since it is going to be in his hometown, I think he will probably get one of the biggest pops of the night for sure. But I just don't know if they're going to give him the win. I think they're going to give that, that Rare Rumble win to Gunther. I think that's the route that they're going to go in. The, but if they were to pull call an audible and have um, Big E win, I would love to see that. Having Big E face Seth Rollins, because that is a feud that goes back to NXT. If you remember, um, Seth Rollins was the inaugural NXT champion. He lost it to Big E. So I think that would be a, a cool moment to see that actually be able to play on uh, on TV once again. So it's always a possibility. I just don't know if they're going to do it. We will have to see. But I wouldn't be mad at that. I wouldn't be mad at it. The next um, hot take you have, Drew will dethrone Gunther either at Mania or one of the PLEs. Well, if he's gonna, if Gunther is dropping that title, he's either going to drop it at Survivor Series at the earliest, which I don't think he's going to do because he's facing The Miz. And I just don't think that that they should have Miz win. But if they haven't went, beat anybody or does anybody take the title off him, it's going to be Chad Gable. And I think they're going to have him face at the Rumble. Now, if Gunther, 
supposed to drop it to Drew? Will I be upset? No. I feel like they have an opportunity to do that. And I think if... But I feel like he's going to end up winning that world championship. I think Drew is going to win that world championship. I'm still going to stick by that. Um, Yeah, I just... I just... I just feel like Drew is probably not going to win that Intercontinental Championship. I think the two that make sense to take the title of Gunther right now is either have Chad Gable win or you have literally um, Sheamus. You have Sheamus take the title of him because I think that story um, needs a conclusive end. And, 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 you know, the story of, you know, Sheamus trying to win the championship that he's never won, I think people will finally get behind him. The match that he had with Gunther going back to Clash at the Castle. That match was one of the best matches of the night. So, I would love to see him drop that title. But I think if he's going to drop that title, it's either going to happen either at Survivor Series, Rumble, or Mania. Because he's not going to be at Elimination Chamber because of the travel issues that he has. So, he won't be able to, to go out of the country uh, for about six months. So, he won't be at Elimination Chamber. So, I can't put... So, he either is going to lose it to... At one of those pay-per-views, so... But I do think he will drop that title eventually. Eventually. The next hot take you have is... Roman will not lose at Mania. I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, I could... It might... It, 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 you mean, never say never. But I just feel like if he were to win at Mania... The crowd would be so pissed. Like, the crowd was already pissed at WrestleMania 39 that Cody didn't win. So, you already kind of shot yourself in the foot because they're now running out of potential threats for his championship or challengers. Because if you have him hold it after Mania, he's going to take another, you know, sabbatical where he's not going to be there for a while unless it's the lead up to SummerSlam. So, he's not going to really have anybody by then because you pretty much fed him everybody that's worth him competing. Everybody else that he hasn't faced haven't been built up to be even somewhat type of threat to him or his championship reign. So, right now, the only people that he has an opportunity to face is AJ. You have him face, um, who else he has? Bobby Lashley. And that's pretty, and maybe Sheamus. And that's pretty much it because everybody else hasn't been built up enough to, to go up against him. And that's the whole point. Like, you want to... And Cody, he he has the biggest chance of doing. You have Drew that's already waiting. Moving. Seth Rollins, you have people that he's faced before. And Jay, you've had people he's faced before. So you don't want to re- do t- t- too much of repetition here. So he would have to, I think he's going to lose that championship at Mania. I think he will. Hot take, Rhea loses the championship before the year ends. Um, I can see it happening, but at the same time, knowing WWE... I think they would have them have her hold that championship until Mania, honestly. I think she's going to hold that championship and she's going to lose it at Mania. She's going to lose it at Mania. Uh, hot take, Creed Brothers will become champion uh, before the end of the year. I can see it. I can see them becoming tag teams by the end of the year. I mean, who, uh, they have they have Judgment Day winning. So, I mean, at some point, at some point, they probably put the titles in them. But I think... You, I think first, before they put the titles on the Creeds, they're going to put on DIY first and then have a big match between DIY and then the Creeds, maybe going into SummerSlam, probably. Uh, next hot take you have is Edge in the future will come back to WWE. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I feel like he's he's the type of guy that I feel like he didn't burn any bridges with the WWE. So it's always that possibility that he could come back. But I think he's doing okay in AEW. I think he's doing serviceable in AW, so I, and everything like that. So we, I mean, I can see him still being inducted to the Hall of Fame, and plus he's been inducted already, so they might have him come back again to be a, a Hall of Famer again. We'll see. The next hot take you have: Sasha Banks will come back to WWE. I can honestly see her coming back to WWE, probably in the Rumble, Rumble match itself. I think either by the end of 2024, she's probably gonna be in the WWE. I think the best time to probably bring her in is have her come through the Rumble, or have her go um make her appearance the night after Mania because the last couple of years, the night after Mania hasn't really lived up to this hype. And I think this could be a way to kind of get things intrigued for the night after Mania, once again, having Sasha Banks make her way back. And just think of the matches that she could have in WWE like that she didn't have the first time around. Like, her versus Jay Cargill is going to be fire. You That match is going to be phenomenal. 
Like, there are so many matches that I would love to see with Sasha Banks now that she is and if she does make the return to WWE. The next hot take you have is Alpha Academy will eventually break up. They'll split up um, color separate ways. Uh, you mean, I guess you mean like they're splitting? I mean, I could see, I don't know if they're splitting in a sense. I could see a situation where they stay together but maybe go after different goals while still being in the faction. The next hot take you have, um, you says Lara will be one of, be the one to beat Rhea Ripley and she gets called up for WWE and she will be the one to, one and only to beat her and get called up to the main roster. I can see her getting called up to the main roster, but I just don't think she's going to beat Rhea Ripley. I think that that will be a crazy moment because that will be a statement uh, and, and get people behind her for sure. But I think you want to slowly build up to that and she's already NXT Women's Champion right now. And I think they're going to give her a lengthy reign because I think for her, she is somebody that they do see being like a future big star for the company. So I think you have her go through the developmental for probably another um, six months or so, have her with that championship. And then maybe around SummerSlam, you bring her in. SummerSlam is probably when you could bring Lyra Valkyrie in it. Um, not really a hot take, but... A heartache. We get a triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship at Mania. We get Brock, Gunther, and LA Knight. I ain't gonna lie to you. That, that That's a nice triple threat. I ain't gonna lie. But I'd rather see Brock Lesnar versus uh, um, Gunther one-on-one. I'd rather see them face one-on-one -on -one because that is gonna be an all-out car wreck. LA Knight being an addition, I would love to see because how over he is. But I think he's gonna win that US Championship like I said early, early in the video. The next hot take you have um, hot take, Liv Morgan comes back before the Royal Rumble, and she doesn't wait any longer, I believe, uh, show, or she could do, does show up in the Royal Rumble if she decides to come back, but I don't know if she, uh, really does come back at the Rumble. I mean, I can, I mean, the whole thing that they've been saying, I think, in the rumors as of late, is that she is going to be going to um, to get checked out later this month, at some point during this month, so if she does come back, she could make her return at Survivor Series, or you have her come back at the Rumble, because the thing is, if you have her be come back at the Rumble, it will be a big pop, just because we haven't seen her in, for, um, right, at this point, almost three, four months now, almost three, four months, we haven't really seen her, you know, be in the WWE, so, she got taken out by Rhea Ripley. So, like you said, she's going to want revenge on her. And I think when you look at the entire story that they've had, their history, it would be a crazy moment for having her to come back. And she's going to have a different look, too. So, you know, usually when somebody comes back with a different look, that lets you know that they're going to have big plans for them. And I think having her win the Rumble would be interesting because, it, in a sense, because you're creating a new star. And also, you have an opportunity to establish her as a new star, like right up there with Bianca Belair and, you know, like a Jay Cargill and stuff like that. You want to push that narrative to where you're building new stars and, and it's stuff like that. And I understand, and I've been seeing a lot of people say Becky, but the thing is she's already done everything that there is to do to win. And if she was to face, um, um, Rhea Ripley, I think that's a non-title feud. I don't think that feud should involve the title. If it was a non-title feud, then I'm okay with it. But if for being the championship, she's already been established. She's had all these moments, so it's about time you start, you know, you know, put not I wouldn't say push them to the side, but leaning away from relying on the same women over and over in these big storyline matches, and kind of let the rest of the roster breathe and get some leeway and kind of get these other opportunities as well. And I think Liv is definitely at the top of that list of stars that are potentially ready to be made. Just, it only takes one moment to make a make a star, and and usually and here's another thing. Even though she's won money in the bank, but and she had a title reign. But think about like in the entire history, not even just in WWE, but sometimes in wrestling in general. We've seen wrestlers hold a get their first championship win, and it always never lives up to the hype. There's been exceptions, but for the majority, it's never lived up to that hype. They always had win the championship first. It always is dull and lackluster. But when they come back and win the championship again, it's different. So I think this is a way to kind of revisit that and kind of make up for everything that happened the first time around. So I do think she should win the Rumble. I think she could potentially come back before the Rumble, but I think if you want to create a bigger moment, have her come back at the Rumble. Eric, uh, 323. 
Uh, is this no? Eric is three two three. My bad. Sorry. Liv should have beaten Becky at day one two years ago. I I actually do. I actually do. Because if you look at the story that Becky and Rhea and Becky and Liv had, Becky was pretty much downplaying her and doubting her the entire feud, saying you've done nothing. Um, you're not gonna win this championship for me. Bringing up her, you know, her history and everything like that, and saying, you know, how, you know, you've had all these opportunities and and someone's always outshining you. And I think if you would have had her win the championship there, I think that would have been a big moment because you could have had her go into the champ, go into WrestleMania as champion and stuff like that. So Liv has definitely been like a victim of like always being at the top of the card but never really getting the big win because somebody else either comes in at the last minute or somebody just always is overshining her so i think a moment like like a rumble win would kind of help that like a like i was telling um like a, when i when i was commenting on jada's um hot take or just a couple of minutes ago but i do think she should have beaten becky lynch at day one i think because they f faced at raw that i think it was raw in november that year and then she had a rematch at um, day one. I think she should have won at day one. I would have even pushed it to the Rumble, honestly, and had like a three-part series. And maybe Becky keeps getting the better of Liv the first two times around. But Liv, you know, pulls out all the stops and has like a stipulation put in place. And you protect Becky, but you also give Liv the crowning uh, moment and have her become Raw Women's Champion. So I think that was the moment they should have gone for but those are my hot takes that you guys have put. I may have gone to all of them, but I got to try to get through as much as I can. We'll do a part two next week. So if you guys are new to the channel and or didn't get a chance to, you go to my community tab. Um, now I'm going to make a new one next week. And you guys should go and leave your hot takes. It could be about WWE. It could be about AEW. It could be about Impact. It could be about anything wrestling. Leave your hot takes in the comment section down below. I love do I'm I'm gonna love I love doing these type of videos because it allows me to engage with you guys and stuff like that. So definitely make sure if you are new, make sure you like that like like this like the video, uh, push the hit the noti bell and then subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 700. We're trying to get to 1K. And like I said uh, in a couple of videos ago, I'm I'm manifesting it right now. By the end of 2024, I'm going to have 10,000 subscribers. We're going for 10K next year, you guys. So make sure you, if you guys are new, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that hit that like. And also comment down below, you know, and let me know what are some of your hot takes as well. What are some of your things or your thoughts and opinions on how wrestling is right now. So leave it all down in the comment section down below. But I'll see you guys in the next video.